Hello everyone and welcome back to another Table 1 video. So today we'll be doing something a little bit different. Um, I posted this tweet as an idea popped into my head and it might be one of, if not my most liked tweet ever. So hopefully people enjoy the information that I will share in this video. I will be talking about how my 2023 season went, which events I traveled to, which decks I played in, how many championship points I got at the end of the season, um, how I ended up finishing my world's qualification and afterwards i will show you my full cost that i uh, kept track of uh, in terms of flights and hotels in order to achieve this yeah and how much i was rewarded in terms of um, prize money at tournaments and also um and also stipends and travel awards and hopefully that will give you an idea of um, what it takes yeah, to be a professional Pokemon TCG player like I am. Yeah, now, granted, this is for a day to grind. And also, my season was definitely a weird one because I actually casted three events, two of which were international championships, which meant I only played one, right? That also put me uh, in a weird position championship points wise. I didn't think I was going to be able to get a day to invite, but then I did really well with me Max at EUAC and here we are. So let's jump into the numbers. If you want to support the channel, you can use code TAILMON to get 5% off at Potan store for your online codes. 10% off for your sealed product at Flipside Gaming and 10% off on your aluminum accessories at TC Evolutions. Or if you're looking to buy singles or sleeves, you can fill up your cart and close the tab. Then click on the affiliate link in the description and check out. That way you can support the channel over at TCG Player, Card Market and Dragon Shield. ¿Eres de México y necesitas cartas de Pokémon? Busca Hyperbeam cards en Facebook e Instagram. Y si estás en Tijuana, búscalos en el local C27 en el Centro Comercial Lotai. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website PokemonCard.io. So a quick recap of my 2023 season. I'd start with the London Open after I got 17th place at the World Championship with Reggie Gigas. The next day, the new season started for me. Played in London Open, I somehow managed to beat both Azul, Garcia Griego, and Sam Chen in the tournament. And I still finished without <laughs> championship points. After feeding them, um, I literally ran out of luck, ran out of steam, and I just ended up faltering. At the end, not getting any championship points, which actually affected me um, a little bit as the season went on. It was definitely a very underwhelming start. I probably should have just stuck with Reggie's, honestly, for the London Open, as I had just played the deck um, the day before. But I wanted to give Arc Intel another chance, and it didn't work out well. Then I traveled to Peoria. Then I figured I would go back to Reggie's. Um, the format hadn't changed, of course. Uh, Reggie's was more on the map, thanks to my placement at World at the World Championship. It was doing a lot better, um, and it was a lot more popular than before the World Championships, but I managed to um, lose a winning in round, in round eight, I believe, and by losing that, I was out of uh, day two contention, so I only managed a top to 56 uh, placement for 30 championship points. Then, fast forward to Salt Lake City, decided to play Palkia, probably the worst deck I played all season. Um, I distinctly remember in my winning in round, I was up against Vikobold, I played Roxanne against them, I lost that round, but I played Roxanne and I drew all four of my battle VIP passes in that hand. So <laughs> that second I swore off Palkia, um, I had played Palkia to the last two tournaments in the season when it was released, uh, the previous season in 2022, Wisconsin Regionals and NAIC, both times I whiffed championship points where any amount of championship points would have given me um, a lot of money. <laughs> so uh, definitely swore off Palkia back then. It was running really well in testing and then in the tournament it just felt super, super bad and super, super awkward. Next, um, I casted LAIC. And that was really cool, my first ever experience. And the week, the weekend after um, was Toronto, right? And obviously Lugia's power level is, um, or was on a whole other world, uh, no, another universe. And so with very little time between events, um, not a lot of time to really test something unique or out of the norm, I decided to go with Lugia. And once again, 
I was out of day to contention by round nine. And in round nine, with a five, three record, I decided to ID, assuming I was safe. And I ended up bubbling top to 56 out of, um, in two, in place 260. That meant I didn't get those 30 championship points. And those 30 championship points that ID costed me a travel award to London later on in the season. So that was a $2,500 ID that uh, that was very costly, yeah. But anyways, um, and you'll see where where that falls in the numbers um, after this overview. Then I fell in love with Rayquaza Raikou. I actually fell in love with the deck. Uh, watching Adam Hawking play the deck at LAIC was already on my radar after I had played with it um, after it had been doing well in online tournaments. Um, I loved the deck. I played at Texas. I lost a win and in yet again because I somehow got paired against the two players that were playing like Arceus, SPN, v, SPN VMAX, and Empoleon, right? They had one Empoleon and in back to back to back games. So in I played, I lost all games um, in those two rounds. So 4 0. In those three of them, they started the lone Empoleon each time, which was really, really annoying, very frustrating. And I also realized there were many things I could have done to improve upon my play, especially note taking. And then I started taking notes and all of a sudden I made top eight in San Diego. I made a crucial, very dumb mistake in the stream match. I was tired. I just forgot how my card actually worked. And then I ended up uh, throwing a match that was probably very winnable um, in top eight. So I made top eight. Uh, got a nice boost of 100 championship points and the requirement for Latin America is 200 championship points for a world's invite so the weekend or two weeks afterwards in Orlando I don't remember how much time went by um, I got another top to 56 in Orlando losing another win and in or actually I tied this time I tied the win and in um, in the last round uh, I won game one my opponent got the tie in game in turn three of game two and um, the tie meant neither of us was going to make day two and they took the tie and so that put me out of day two <laughs> so um that that was a lot of uh win and ins lost which was very frustrating or ruined i guess not even lost i didn't lose this one um so another top 256 and i did have my world's invite at that point now at that point i didn't know if i was going to cast any more events or whatnot um and i knew that well i hadn't gone to Australia to play. I didn't play in Latin America, so I really need to do well at EUAC and NAC to potentially get the day two. But I was honestly kind of giving hope, giving up hope on that. And I felt like I would uh, lose my day two streak for Worlds at that point in time. Then Charlotte came along and I managed to finally win an in, to win a win and in rather. And I finished in the top 64, earning myself an extra 50 championship points, which at that point didn't feel significant. Obviously, they were very, very relevant at the end of the season. That was also my sixth finish for um, for regionals. So I needed to do better than top to 56 in order to um, in order to gain any championship points. And then the weekend after, I went to Fort Wayne, and I managed once again to lose a win and in on stream yeah uh once again making a crucial mistake so i definitely need to check myself um in the future when playing on stream because i made way too many stupid and dumb mistakes i had the game one in winner in the winning in and i overextended and i played um i started playing the turn after the one i was going to playing and then anyways it was very dumb of me and i managed to throw away Instead of gaining championship points, I managed to throw away any sort of possible gain on stream, which was very frustrating. And then going into AC, we had rotation, and you can see the little crown that I put on Mu V Max right there. Um, EU AC was obviously pretty good. Cool. It was a dream run. Um, I felt like I made a very good meta call in the end. I knew, like I kept telling my friends, the like what I what I knew for going into rotation was every duck sucked right so i wanted to play judge path in order to make them suck even more right if we're all playing sucky decks then when i judge path you your sucky deck will will work even less right it will suck even more and that's why i played um, uv max with genesect with heavy path and double turbo and it worked out very very nice um i ran into <laughs> 
toward Reklev, which was very frustrating as I had lost to him in day one in a game that was definitely very winnable if we weren't pressed for time as long as he played faster, which he started playing very slow. Um, in the beginning, I asked him to play faster, he did, but then because we were pressed for time to finish game three to determine a winner, I made a mistake of uh, not fully checking my prices and that cost me. Then in day two, I completely dominated him in our match. He had no chance. And, and then in top four, I'm sure many of you have seen, I managed to win a very, very scrappy and long and difficult game one. And then games two and three were just crap for me. So that was a very devastating loss, especially um, at the speed that he plays very... Um, anyways, frustrating match, frustrating way to lose. And that put me, though, at 590 championship points. So I earned more championship points at that tournament than in every other tournament combined, right? Which was pretty impressive. And then they announced cups and challenges and I knew that I needed to really dig into those cup and challenges, maximize as much as possible my points in order to make sure that I could earn my day to invite and lock that up. Yeah, I felt pretty comfortable at EUIC. Then they announced the cups and challenges and then I knew I was in a little bit of a perilous situation, but I managed to uh, get 120 out of a possible 130 championship points from two cups and two challenges. I won a challenge followed by a cup with a turbo loss box and then I won a challenge followed by a second place at a cup with Lugia in back-to-back -back days. So that was pretty neat to do that um, to get the like the pair of good results. I thought of trying to get those extra 10 championship points because I thought they would matter. They actually could have mattered. Um, I ended up with 710 championship points um, in the ranking and 11th place has uh, 712 championship points. So if I had won that last league cup, if I had maximized that, then I wouldn't have been so nervous at NAC for two people to pass me. I knew one person could pass me, but I, two people would be... Um, uh, really harsh because then I would end up in 13th place and I would not get any money or the day to invite but thankfully everything worked out and I was extremely nervous especially because I knew I was going to be casting NAIC and therefore it was going to be very very um, or rather it was like the league ups and league challenges were my last chance right but that's how my season went now let's check how much my season cost me so here are the numbers that um, people wanted to see that got um, so much attention when I posted that tweet and hopefully this makes it my highest viewed video ever hopefully one can dream right um, but anyways this is the excel table that or the google sheet rather table that I kept track of um, now the costs are approximate they are in US dollars all right and it is a pretty hefty amount okay it doesn't include any food but um as you can see, like some of the costs were very high. For example, Toronto was really expensive, the flight. I thankfully didn't have to spend any money on hotel. That was like a last minute whim decision because I knew I was gonna be casting LAC, which was also sort of last minute. So I figured I could use some of, the, um, some of that money that I earned from working in order to um, pay for the Toronto trip and I wanted to play, right, with the new set and everything. So I decided it was worth it. I also figured that the quarter two, which included Toronto, Arlington, San Diego, and Orlando, was the one to really push for in terms of uh, getting championship points because that would probably guarantee an EUIC stipend, right? Or travel award, rather. And I was 30 points off from that. So that was very frustrating. Um, but anyways, uh, you can see from the event in Sao Paulo, I did not play, but there's money in prizes in terms of I had a... Um, stipend that I was awarded from my previous play in the previous season. So even though I cast it, I was awarded that amount of money, which was very nice of Pokemon to do that um, because I was planning on travel on competing, right? And it was something that I had earned. Then in San Diego, I earned um, $525 from top eight. Uh, this is because for anyone outside the US, they take away 30% of whatever money you earn, they take away 30%. So the stipend worth $1,000, they take away 30%, so 300. Yeah, in San Diego, I earned $750 from making top eight, but they take away 30%, yeah? 
And then afterwards, after all that happened, um, I got my stipend for London. And then in London, I placed in top four as well, earning me $2,500 plus a $1,000 stipend. That's $3,500 minus the 30% that leaves $2,450, as you can see right there. And then my top four placement, along with the championship points that I got at Charlotte and Fort Wayne, earned me a travel award to Columbus, which is worth another $3,500. And therefore, uh, with minus 30%, the same $2,450. And then my play overall in the whole season um, earned me the travel award to Yokohama, Japan, which is another $2,450. All right. So um, as you can see, the big reason why I was able to make money off of my um, off of my season, as you can see right here, yeah, my costs versus uh, my expenses. Now, this does not include the travel to Yokohama, Japan. Yeah, I still would, I still will be making money off of my season. Um, I did not include those numbers because they're they're not finalized. I'm taking extra time. I don't know how much I'm spending uh, in terms of hotel, but this is how much it costs me as a Pokemon professional player to make day two at the World Championships in Yokohama, Japan, yeah, for the 2023 season. And that is how much money I earned playing throughout the whole season. And I will be honest, I definitely did not have the best results, all right? Now, this doesn't include any food expenses or like Uber and stuff like that. You could easily add another $1,000 to that um, between Ubers and food. Um, I did make, for example, the Orlando trip was a weird one because I traveled early, then I went to Disney, um, and then after Orlando, I took a week off, and like I flew Mexico to Orlando, to Orlando to Cancun, and I had a small vacation with my girlfriend, and then Cancun back to Mexico, so that was a weird one. Um, so there's many like little things, yeah, that are just personal from Pablo playing Pokemon and how Pablo likes to travel. Right, you can add anywhere between five hundred to a thousand dollars in terms of food and um, like Ubers and things like that. Just transport, getting back and forth, um, hotels, convention centers, all of that. I think a thousand is pretty um, like on the ball. Um, probably a, it's a little bit less, but you can add a thousand to that. Yeah, but just in flights and hotels, um, that's the big cost, obviously, right there. And even with a thousand dollars plugged in from food, you still get a solid almost two thousand um, dollar excess money, right? And now imagine if they didn't take away thirty percent of my earnings, then it would be even higher. All right. So this is like full disclosure. I know people are interested um, now. Like I said, I didn't have a very stellar season. I made day two very few times. I definitely could have made more if I played cleaner on stream, if I played cleaner overall. Yeah, so I made some very, very stupid, silly mistakes that cost me greatly, I would say, in terms of travel award potential, in terms of price money at events. Yeah, so that definitely factors in. And I would I would rate this season for me personally, in terms of my performances, as a three out of five. Yeah, and if I had not gotten top four, in London probably would have been a two out of five yeah, or a one out of five. Definitely not one of my best seasons. I have this one or two standout results. Everything else is what I consider for myself um, pretty bad yeah, and below my average and my standard, but still it was still cost effective yeah, for me to go to these events, to travel and a big part of this is the the like the experience, yeah, the adventure, the seeing my friends, traveling with my friends meeting people yeah everyone who's watching this video maybe i met you at one of these events for the first time or maybe for the 10th time yeah and you came up to me and we talked and all of that is like you cannot put a price to that all right so definitely really cool um i plan on doing it the next season as well for sure um i don't know if there's like how casting will affect my next season or not, maybe I will not be called back. I actually do not know anything as of right now, but um, regardless, I'm still gonna be doing this. I'm still gonna be traveling to as many events as I humanly possibly can. I also have a personal life, I have many things, um, but you do have to factor in that these are my personal costs, yeah? I don't have any kids. I am single, I'm not married, I have a girlfriend, but I'm not married, I live on my own, yeah, so it's very easy for me to just go into a hotel with three other friends, split the cost, yeah, some of the hotels were very expensive, 
um, towards the end. I spent extra time in London, uh, which is the most I spent on hotels. Charlotte, we had a mishap and due to weather or some like late cancellation, some of my friends didn't make it. So I had to pay half of the hotel instead of a quarter, right? So that cost would have been half. So things happen. Yeah. Arlington as well. My flight would have been half of that, but then due to weather and many things, like I had like last minute um, stuff that comes up, my cost ended up doubling for the flight. So my cost definitely could be lower. My prices could hopefully be much higher. Um, hopefully 2024 season will be a better one for me. And there's still um, Yokohama, right? Yokohama is gonna add to my total spent, but hopefully can add to my total earned beyond that. Yeah, so, all right. That covers uh, the information. Let me know if there's anything else that you wish I had covered and I didn't, and I'll be happy to respond in a comment or maybe make a follow-up video, like a sort of Q&A, if you will, um, if there's something that you wanted to hear about or any costs that um, are important to you that maybe I didn't cover. But I hope I covered pretty much everything about how um, a professional Pokemon TCG player, or at least Paolo Mesa, the professional Pokemon TCG player, handles everything. Yeah, I like to think that there's Paolo Mesa, the professional Pokemon TCG player, and there's Tableman, the content creator, right? And it's really difficult sometimes to balance both to, both things. Um, of course, they're intertwined and interconnected in many, many aspects. Um, but with everything back in full motion, that's why videos have been more scarce. I'm just coaching. My, my coaching schedule was very um very open and now i rarely have open slots week in week out because everyone's excited to get the season started everyone wants to try and um get better at pokemon right and i'm here to share that knowledge yeah through the videos through the coaching through everything um that i do right and thanks so much to everyone who's watching i really wouldn't be where I am today, I wouldn't be who I am today without all of you, all 25,000 plus of you who have signed up and support what I post day in, day out. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.